A-N. Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, let's take a look at what we got going on today. The, this market really wants a higher price, it would see. We have the ES Mini trading up about 0.87% right now, just over that 5,000 mark, and I believe, give me one second, the SPX were trading, yeah, 4,998 currently. That 5,000 mark uh, is pretty huge, at least psychologically speaking. Pretty interesting stuff going on. Again, I really think this market is just pushing higher prices, and they really want it as well. Let's look at the Russell, up about 0.15% today, uh, not as much as the other equities, uh, but still trading at 1964. The NQs up about 1.12%. The Dow futures trading up about 0.5% right now. The gold contract uh, staying pretty flat around this 2050 area. Of course, at the beginning of this month, I've been with you since then, but we were up at 2084, and then we came back down. We got a little bit of motion in the gold contract, uh, again, before coming back down to that 2050 area. <clears throat> Excuse me. Silver. Uh, we're trading at 2230. Of course, some downward movement as well. A lot of this is... Kind of have to do with the dollar right now, right? The dollar, we had a huge tick up in it uh, above the 104 level. I think it was sitting comfortably at 104.41, uh, but we're kind of tracing back down at least to 104.05 currently. Uh, let's take a look at poor copper, down about 1.2% today, uh, 373 on the contract. Again, this movement in the test it's doing is kind of looking at a 404 price for the copper futures contract, and we'll see how that shakes out going forward. Crude oil. 73.90. I think it, this whole market is super interesting, at least with oil, right? I mean, I'm surprised we aren't seeing these $95 levels. Uh, I was kind of bringing this up in the office. Um, of course, you had so much disruption in the Middle East. Um, Saudi Arabia is posturing themselves to try to reduce the amount of oil they're pushing out. Uh, of course, you have issues with Russia, disputes between Venezuela and I think Guyana over some of their um, areas over there. Like you can essentially pull oil out of. But, you know, really, I mean, America, we are drilling. Uh, I think we just got a bunch of permits for the Permian Basin. Of course, tons of oil out there. Um, and they're going to install frack lines as well. Um, so when those oil rigs go off for whatever reason, uh, they can just, or let's say just price spikes uh, due to some kind of outside supply issue, uh, they can just turn on those fracking pipes and uh, it can stable out price. It's pretty fascinating, honestly. Um, long story short is we're going to be the top producer of oil um, for quite a while to come now. All right, we can take a look. Uh, Tesla, <clears throat> I mean, 10-year bond, let's, you know, when Powell spoke last Wednesday, we had a drop down to about 3.8% in the yield. I'm looking at Tesla right now, but um, <clears throat> that's what this was here. And we had a 3.8% in the yield. And now we've kind of come back up a little bit, uh, trading about 4.1% uh, rate on the 10-year. Tesla trading 188.41. Some okay news coming from them. Of course, quite a fall down uh, since the end of last year. Some demand for EVs are expected to go down. Uh, Tesla costs a lot of money for them to produce some stuff. Uh, there was a huge kind of news story that came out, and it, it seemed to go away pretty quickly. But, you know, the batteries weren't charging in Chicago when they had that deep freeze. And that's a unique thing that's not going to just affect Tesla. I mean, it's going to affect any lithium-ion battery car. And that's more of an issue of, I guess, chemistry uh, than, you know, engineering. And so it'll be interesting to see how they try to pivot away from that. Furthermore, Tesla came out and said that the uh, whole market is in trouble regarding Baidu and their production of EVs. Uh, and if there's not some kind of government, I suppose, work or barriers to entry imposed, um, that the Chinese EVs could sweep the market because they could produce it so much cheaper. You had also, let me get the number on it, Ford uh, is going to start creating smaller and cheaper EVs, and Tesla will as well. And that's going to be super inter interesting to see come out. Um, I still think the infrastructure isn't fully there for the rest of the country to kind of adopt EVs, uh, but nonetheless, there is a massive push um, from government agencies to kind of get these things rocking, and I, I think these cheaper prices um, will kind of help in the coming years. I think this year is going to be pretty tough uh, for the automotive industry anyways. Uh, you had so much purchasing the last few years. You have a lot of people currently defaulting on auto loans, which we'll talk a little bit about going forward. Um, 
but this could be cause uh, for at least some green day in Tesla. Steel Dynamics, yeah, up 4.1% today. Just a really neat stock. Uh, again, I talk about it every time, but uh, very nice. I wonder if we're going to start uh, creating a new trading balance between this 110 area. Again, you have this shoot up. The highest we had is 128. That was in December 18th. Uh, traversal back down to the 110 area, and then it seems like we're moving back again. That last day with volume, we had a high on that day of about 127.70. Uh, so we'll see if we test that again. Again, if that happens, for me, I'm going to be watching a movement back down to that 110 area and then a rejection at that level and uh, see if we can see a new kind of trading channel form uh, for Steel Dynamics. Of course, the dollar, as I was just saying, trading at 104.05. Uh, again, kind of lagging with the metal market there. QQQs trading at 432.46, up 114. Google up 0.95%. Meta. A lot of interesting stuff going on with Meta that we can talk about going forward. Uh, of course, everyone loved the dividend. Everyone loved the stock buyback. I mean, who doesn't if you're an investor? Uh, a super unique challenge going in to this presidential election, and Meta has been, uh, at least Zuckerberg, has been pretty vocal about it, is the risk that AI plays, right? So misinformation, um, and then really, you know, in a way, making kind of subtle, how do I say it, like, Kind of, kind of more like subtle propaganda in a sense, right? Like you have all these different interests online. You can just be random groups of people even, and they can use AI and, and really get their you know, perspective out there and, and kind of get what they want to say. Now you get into sketchy situations where they're releasing um, misinformation. So Meta is going to be really focusing on that in the coming election cycle, and it'll be a, pretty much a case study to see how the rest of these large tech firms that, that have social media platforms should be addressing this going forward. Uh, furthermore, Meta also said, uh, Zuckerberg said, that they're going to stay very slim and focus a lot on AI, um, which, again, I think is pretty good for the company going forward. Uh, we have earnings today with Disney. We'll talk a little bit about them when we get back. Folks, stay right there.